Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome today to Jesus the Healer. We are so thrilled to get to spend this time with you and to bring the Word to you. And uh, we love the Word, don't we? Yes. We love hearing the Word because then we better know how to do the Word. Amen. How many of you know it's not just the hearer that's blessed? It's the doer that's blessed. But it does begin with the hearing. It doesn't end with the hearing, but it begins with the hearing. Amen. We have been looking at some passages of miracles, healings that happened under Jesus's earthly ministry. And um, the word tells us that Jesus went everywhere teaching, preaching, and healing. Notice this, he didn't leave any community out of those flows. Right. Everywhere he went, teaching, preaching, and healing. What is that? That's the works of Jesus. Yes. And notice it's a package deal. Yes. If we'll listen to the teaching and the preaching, notice it will arrive us at healing. Amen. And if, we're, if we haven't arrived at healing, let's go back to the teaching and the yes. preaching to see what we need to implement or believe so that we can cooperate with God to receive healing. Amen. Amen. But uh, let's just say this, that uh, Jesus, well, Jesus made this statement. He says, the same works that I do, the works that I do shall you do also. So, um, and then he said, and greater works, or we could say this greater quantities of this yes. will even flow because there's more of you as the body of Christ than him. When he first began, uh, he was the one anointed. Uh, he was the one ministering. He then sent out the twin, the 12, then he sent out the 70. But how much, how many of you know, there's more now, yes. there's more now. And he sends us out because he says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So every one of us are entrusted with uh, ministering to the sick. Amen. Well, that being the case, then we need to know something. We have to be taught how to receive healing power, but we also have to be taught how to minister healing power. So we're taking a very, uh, a more in-depth look at these miracles of healing that happened under Jesus's earthly ministry because it helps us to be more effective at receiving and more effective at ministering healing. Uh, we started on the previous episode talking or teaching out of the passage in Matthew chapter 15. So let's pick it up again. And let's see about finishing that, that up today. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 21. It reads, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. So these are, Tyre and Sidon are territories where the Gentiles lived. That, mean they, that means they weren't Jews. They did not have a covenant with God. So Jesus was not there preaching and teaching. He was just, he went through that coast, through that area. And while he's in this region, verse 22, it says, Behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. So notice this, this is not a Jewish woman. She doesn't have a covenant with God. Verse 23, but Jesus answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him saying, send her away for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He means at that time. At that time. Later, the Gentiles were brought into uh, receiving salvation, but he's referring to while he's there at this time. Verse 25, then came she and worshiped him saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it's not meat or right to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great 
is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. So notice one flow of healing power is to set people free from the bondages of an evil spirit that would try to trouble them. That's another flow of God's power. Now we looked at some the pre, we looked at the, some of these verses already, so watch the previous episode to hear what was said on those. But I want us to go to look at verse 22 again. In verse 22, it says, She cried unto him, saying, Lord, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. So she's calling him using a, a, a title or terminology that Jews would have used, uh, Lord, son of David. Now, why did she do that? Well, when Mark tells this same account, now we're reading it in Matthew, but when Mark tells the same account, Mark said she had heard of Jesus. Notice it didn't say she had been in a service where he preached. It didn't say that she had heard a sermon. It says she heard of him. So uh, she's heard of him from someone who would have seen him or heard him, very possibly a Jew. Maybe that's where she heard the terminology, Lord, son of David. So she approaches him with these words. They are not the words a Gentile would have used. These are what we would call more something a Jew would have stated. And when she approached him saying, Lord, son of David, he didn't answer her. He's not being rude. He's not being unkind. He knows what he's doing. He's going to bring her to a place of receiving. But I say it this way. It seems as though she's put borrowed words in her mouth. She's heard him called by this title, Lord, Son of David. But being being a Gentile, of course, those are not words that they would have used. So Jesus doesn't want to hear from you what you think he wants to hear. He wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from your heart. He doesn't want to hear practiced words, borrowed words, terminology that doesn't flow from your heart. So in verse 24, it says, but he answered her and said, I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He's talking about at this time. And so that means he came to preach to the Jew first. After that, he would be crucified, raised from the dead, and then he would send Jews to go preach salvation to the Gentiles. So that time was coming, but it hadn't come yet. And that's what he's referring to. Verse 25 says, Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. So what do we see? She makes a first approach to Jesus. He doesn't answer her. So she makes a second approach and her second approach is different. First of all, it has this flow of worship in it. It says she came and she worshiped him. She didn't do that the first time. We don't see anything of the flow of worship. And so that didn't get a response, right? When she didn't worship, but now she worshiped him. And I love the simplicity of the prayer. I love how it sounds heartfelt. Lord, help me. You know, when you don't know what to say, that's a good prayer. Lord, help me. It worked for her. She did get help. And so you see the simplicity of her request. You see the heartfelt um, tone of these words. Lord, help me. In other words, I used the right words I thought I should use, and that didn't work. I just need help. I just need help. Now, verse 26. How many of you know he's not trying to withhold her help from her? He's trying to get her in a place of receiving the help she needs. Others might look on this scene and say, my, the preacher was being rude. He's not being rude. He's trying to bring her to a place. And you know, how many times if we come to God and it seems like we're not receiving, it's not that God's saying no. It's not that God's not going to help us, but sometimes he works with us further to get us to a place where we can receive the highest and the best that he has for us. Amen. And so Jesus is, if I could say this, he's working with her. He's not, 
He's not leaving her as he found her. He's bringing her further. Amen. He's working with her. Verse 26, he answered and said, it's not meat or it's not right to take the children's bread and to cast it to, to dogs. So notice he says children's bread. What's he calling children's bread? Deliverance. Yes. Help. Yeah. Yes. He, healing. Yes. Amen. Deliverance is another flow of healing. Right. So he's saying this is the children's bread. So he calls that a, the, that the bread that belongs to his children. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. You belong to him. Yeah. It belongs to you. Yeah. Healing belongs to you. Help always belongs to you. Now, when I was growing up in our home, bread was a staple at every meal. My mother, uh, people, I don't know if they cooked the same amount they used to. I mean, used to. (laughs) Mother cooked basically every night and the family would get together and we ate dinner together. But nearly, I don't remember that if she didn't make bread, that if bread wasn't on the table, we would go to the cabinet and pull out a a loaf of bread out of the sack and we'd put slices of bread on the table because it was just a staple at every meal. Bread was a staple. So what do we know? Healing is to be a staple of God's people. Healing power is to be on every table every day. Amen. Now, you know, sometimes I'll go to restaurants and they'll have things on the menu. I go, I never heard of that. And I go, I don't, you know, I wasn't raised eating that. I've never seen that before. And I'm not the most adventurous eater. I'm a real simple eater. I want to eat something I recognize. Uh, How many of you know it wasn't some odd foreign type food that Jesus paralleled healing with? It's a staple item, a staple item, something every home would have had. And Jesus said, every one of my children, this is a staple healing power. Delivering power is a staple of their everyday life. It belongs to them. Um, You remember in Psalm 23, I believe verse five or six, it says this, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Yeah, it's Psalm 23, verse five. God prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Uh, Yes, where is he talking about? He's not talking about in heaven. He's talking about on this earth. Why? Because there's no enemy in heaven. He prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies right here on this earth where the devil is present. And he's not talking about just people as enemies. He's talking about evil spirits, Satan, and that which opposes your life. Right in the presence of all opposition, God has prepared a table and it's spread with every provision you'll need. The bread of life, yes. the wine of the Holy Ghost, yes. the meat of the Word. Yes. Amen. Everything you need is on the table. Yeah, the devil's present, but he's not at the table. Yes. Amen. What's this mean? God has prepared a place for us to be occupied with and feast off of so that we're not giving our attention to the devil that's present. You can, the devil's present on the earth, so what? Uh, he's not, he's not Lord over you. If you're born again and the child of God, he doesn't, he's not in Lordship over you. Too many times the devil, the devil, we give him too much attention and then we give him a place in our life because we gave him our attention. Let's give the word, the table of God's word that spread with all the abundance that belongs to us. Let's feast off that word. Amen. Amen. That's where our attention belongs. Amen. Um, you know, when we would have dinner at growing up, uh, we would say there were four kids in the family. My parents there, so there was normally at least six of us at the table. And we'd say, would you pass me this or pass me that? What, what's on the table of God's provision? The bread. Can you say this? If you need healing, pass me the bread. Pass me the healing. Now, in the Great Commission, we are commanded to pass the bread. Why? They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. What is that? We're passing the bread to the people who need healing. We're passing it. Amen. Amen. What's that mean? We need to become skillful at ministering healing power to people. Amen. Pass the bread. Don't just keep it all at your plate. (laughs) 
And you, you know, with us kids, we paid attention if somebody took. To, <laughs> yeah. They took it and kept it. No, you pass that on down. You can take some, but you're not getting all of it. Amen. Well, we need to pay attention that we're not trying to keep all the blessings to ourselves, but we're passing it out to those who don't know how how tasty God is. What's the word say? Taste and see that the Lord is good. Healing is so tasty. Amen. Victory is so tasty. Amen. So we are, we are recognizing that the bread of God's provision, the bread of healing belongs to us. Amen. Amen. So uh, he said this, he said, it's not right for me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. So in other words, he said, it's not right for me to take the portion that belongs to someone else and someone of mine and give it to someone that doesn't belong to me. Right. Now, notice that didn't offend her. Ah, we see something about this, this little gal. She's not touchy. She's not looking for a reason to be dismissed. Um, if I could say this, she came looking for a way to receive, not a way to accuse herself of why she can't receive. So many people say, well, I can't receive because... I haven't done this or I haven't been this or I should have done better and I could, I've made so many mistakes and they're always thinking of and speaking of reasons why they shouldn't receive. Not this woman. She didn't even have covenant with God and she never brought that up. She never brought that up. She just came looking to receive. She didn't look, come with a reason why she couldn't receive her miracle. That's a lesson for us. And when Jesus would bring up something that would look like a reason she wouldn't receive. She didn't, she didn't take it. Mm -mm. No, no, she just wouldn't quit. I just love this little gal, right? When he said, it's not right for me to take what belongs to my children and give it to someone who's not my child. I love what she said in verse 27. She said, truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs because he called her a dog. Now he answered and he said, verse 26, he answered and said, it's not meat or right to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. Um, the thing is, is he's, he's not looking for a reason to disqualify her. He's getting her to use her faith. Amen. 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 Uh, he was being good to her. He's not looking for a reason to disqualify her, but she didn't take offense at it. Yes, that's good. And she, she said, um, I, I love, she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. What she's saying, I'm not asking you to take a portion, a full portion that belongs to your children and give it to me. I'm not asking for that. She said, a crumb will do. A crumb of God's power. A crumb of healing power. A small measure is far more than enough to set my daughter free. That's what does she believe? She believes something really right. Amen. And so, um, she didn't take offense at what he said to her. She didn't try to defend herself. If, he, she, if I could say this, she didn't say, well, you know what? You've just been rude. <laughs> she wasn't trying to look good to him or trying to save her pride, so to speak, because it could cost her a miracle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, she wasn't offended. If we, if we want to receive from God, let's get rid of any air of anything of air and offense of, you know, because that would get in the way of us receiving. Amen. Uh, and so, um, she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs, which fall from, which look at this, which fall. I'm not taking it from them. I'm not taking or asking you to take what belongs to your children, what falls, what falls. What's that mean? What they're careless with, yes. what they let drop. Yes. Just let me have what fell. <laughs> A crumb's enough for me. A crumb's enough for me. Amen. 
Amen. She, this, this little gal has some no, some no quitting sense in her, right? Yes. Yes. Amen. Um, we, get a, we get a bit of this from her that we see in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7. It reads, ask mm-hmm. and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. I believe it's the Amplified Classic that says ask and keep asking. Keep asking. Yes. Seek and keep seeking. Yes. Knock and keep knocking. In other words, it, it, this woman didn't just ask once and walk away and say, well, that didn't work. No, no. She just kept letting Jesus bring her to a place where her faith was effective. Amen. She just kept at it, kept yeah, at it. Right. You know, when you see someone who's skillful with their faith, you want to know how they got there? They just kept at it till they learned it. You see someone who's skillful in their prayer life, they just kept at it. They didn't start out skillful, they just kept at it. That's a way with spiritual truths. That's what it means, ask and keep asking, or or seek and keep seeking, knock and keep knocking. It doesn't mean that God's hard of hearing. It's just saying, keep learning, keep learning, keep learning the truths of the kingdom, how they work, keep working your skill, keep working with your faith until you become very skillful. Amen. Amen. So she wasn't asking um, him to take something from someone else. She's just saying, give me a portion. Just give me a crumb of God's power, a crumb of healing. Amen. Amen. She did not look for a reason why she couldn't have it. But she found a reason to receive and lay hold. How many times really people come up with that? Well, I just haven't, I, I, I just haven't, you know, I just haven't done all I could have done for God. I, I haven't read my Bible enough. I haven't prayed enough. See, the devil who's accuser of the brethren will always put accusations in your thought life, if you let him, against why you can't receive or why you shouldn't receive. This woman didn't do that. Every time it was presented to her, she never, never, never um, took up, took anybody up on that. She just came up with a reason why she could have it. That's right. That's right. Amen. She kept coming up with it. Amen. Yeah. And then we see this in verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Yes. <laughs> she just won't, she just won't give up. Yeah. Jesus said, great is your faith. Yeah. Then said, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. Yeah. Yeah. Notice yeah. this people uh, who did not have a covenant with him, if they just came and believed the right thing, they could still receive. Wow. Amen. 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 And it says, and her daughter was made whole from that very hour. So Jesus puts a badge, if I could say this, on her life and said, great faith. Yes. Meaning this, our faith can be, it doesn't have to stay where it's at. She yes. didn't start out with great yes. faith, yes. but because she just stuck with it. Mm-hmm. She just kept letting him school her. Mm-hmm. And yeah. if I could say this, bring, the, bring her to a place of great faith. Mm-hmm. She was willing for that to happen. And know this, what happened? Her daughter was set free. Her daughter was set free because she ha- her daughter had a mother who wouldn't quit. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 She believed when she didn't even have a covenant mm-hmm. yet. Amen. She reached past those who had a covenant. Because there were people who had a covenant with Jesus in that day and they still weren't receiving. Not because of Jesus, but because they wouldn't believe. In, in Jesus' hometown of Nazareth, they had, covenant, they had a covenant with God. And uh, the Bible says because they were offended at him, They were offended at him because they dishonored him. Mm -hmm. And it says he could there do no mighty work. Why? Because of their unbelief. They chose not to believe. This woman without a covenant reached past those who had a covenant. How did she do that? Faith helped her do that. Those who were careless, who would not reach, reach with their faith to lay hold of what God had provided for them. She just reached past those and, and um, just laid hold of her answer. Yes. And Hallelujah. Jesus liked it. Yes. He said, great yes. is your faith. Yes. Listen, faith pleases him. Yes. Faith right. pleases yes. him. Yes. We, and and we, we see this, that she didn't have, if I could say this, the, the instruction, the 
spiritual background that would have taught her a right way to approach him, but she was willing to go through the process right. of learning to not quit. Yeah. Amen. Faith, to come to a great faith, just learn not to quit. It doesn't mean you start out even doing everything right, but you stay with it till you learn and you learn and you learn. And the Word keeps teaching us and the Holy Ghost keeps yeah. teaching us and our pastor keeps teaching us. Amen. Don't give up. I said, don't give up. Well, I want to pray with those of you who you may be watching today and you say, Pastor Nancy, I'm struggling with something in my body. Maybe I'm being harassed or tormented by some kind of opposition. I want you to know you can receive your, he your help. You can receive everything you need today. So Father, I thank you for these precious people. They're hungry for your word. And Father, we thank you that you have power that will set every single person free from no matter what their need is, whether it's healing they need, whether it's freedom in their mind, peace in their mind, no matter what their need is, Father, I join my faith with them. You release your faith. And Father, we thank you for healing power, delivering power. And we say be free from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Pain, leave your body. Sickness, disease, leave your body. Torment, leave your mind. And peace come in Jesus' name. And we receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Just say, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Hallelujah. Well, we have been teaching out of my book, The Healer Divine. We invite you to get your copy. You can go to JesusTheHealer.org and you can purchase your copy there and we'll get it right out to you. One reason, the primary reason we're able to come to you today is because of the generosity of Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Copeland Ministries. He sows this airtime to me and to every programmer on this channel. So we ask you, if you're not already, pray about becoming, becoming a partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries because it keeps this message coming into your home. Amen. You can sign up to become a partner by going to kcm.org and sign up to be a partner there. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In this classic book by Nancy Dufresne, The Healer Divine, we are presented with a study of the healings of Jesus. Your faith will be stirred to believe and act as the healed God has already made you to be. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. We invite you to join us for our annual Ladies' Conference at World Harvest Church in Marietta, California from October 1st through the 3rd. The speakers will be Nancy Dufresne, Pat Harrison, and Deborah Simons. Everyone is welcome to attend. For more information or to register for in-person attendance, please visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. Nancy Dufresne is the president of World Harvest Bible Training Center in Marietta, California. This is a word and spirit Bible school where you will receive impartations and revelations. So whether you're called to the fivefold ministry or want to bring a greater supply to your local church, this could be the school for you. We're now accepting applications. Go to whbtc.org for more information.